All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you, Denzel. Um, so thank you for uh, the, the kind words and introduction. So if your audience have never heard of me before, um, so I am a personal finance YouTuber. I mainly talk about personal finance topics with like credit, um, credit repair, uh, car leasing, and just anything that revolves around usually debt. Um, that's kind of like what I like to focus on because there's so many ways that you can leverage it. So a little bit of background on me. Um, I always been very fascinated with personal finance ever since I was young. So ever since I started making money, this is when it kind of dawned on me like, hey, this is something I really need to know. Um, so I actually joined the military right after, right out at high school, right? And as you may know, like a lot of kids, this is the first time this is their, they're collecting a paycheck. They're like 18 years old and they're buying like Camaros at like 21%, you know? So they weren't making the best financial decisions during that time. So I was always there trying to give advice to like younger Marines here. And they're like, Hey, don't make these stupid decisions. Don't run up too much debt. Or just if you're going to like leverage your credit and stuff like that, just make sure that you play it correctly. Um, so skip forward a few years, you know, I've had my own career. I was in uh, the healthcare space. Then I always wanted to start a YouTube channel because I was like, I'm not getting any younger. So might as well talk about personal finance because that's something I love talking about. Then ever since then, I have a couple of videos that took off, especially about car leasing, um, how to rebuild credit. I actually had a credit repair agency as well. So I was repairing clients credit um, on a one on one basis. And it brings here today. Um, and this is what I do mostly for a living. Just talk about finances, help people get better with credit and their financial situation. That is awesome. Really appreciate you sharing that because just from me observing you over the years, um, can you share when you got started on YouTube? Um, I recently did a whole case study analysis of your YouTube channel because uh, one part of my business is helping people that want to become financial coaches or want to enter the, the financial industry space, whether as a coach or a consultant or an insurance agent or an advisor or a planner, whatever that may be, I am uh, really encouraging those clients of mine to create content. And so I look at other successful content creators that have built a blueprint, a system that has you know produced success and results, you being one of them. So can you uh, spend a little more time just on the, the origin when you started YouTube and how you decided to pick those topics? Was it based on just the, the people around you that you were just, like you said, you were observing and you're like, what the heck are these people doing? Mm -hmm. How did you know to make better decisions? Were you, was it uh, parents or someone in your life mentoring you or was it just self-taught? Talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, so I started my YouTube channel in the summer of 2019, I believe. And uh, the type of videos I was talking was very kind of simple things around that time, like how to set up a budget, um, like how to invest into crypto, things that were kind of trendy at the time, but also just more like generalized personal finance topics. Uh, because I can understand that my background is maybe not the same as everybody else, because, you know, being in like an immigrant household, I was like the first one that, that was able to speak English, right? So I was handling a lot of the responsibilities, like talking to, like, uh, let's say utility companies and stuff like that, trying to pretend like I'm my mom or something, you know? So <laughs> yeah. as like a kid, like a teenager, you shouldn't be having to do those things. But those experiences, like thinking back on it, that actually really matured me and learned, make me taught more about like adult life, you know, like paying your bills on time, how to balance a checkbook, um, handling credit cards, things like that. Um, I know that, that my personal situation is a little bit different than others. So that's how um, that kind of came about because like when I was around my peers, I noticed that they weren't really financially savvy. They were getting into debt and like loans that they really had no clue about. They just thought that as long as they can make the payments, that's all that really matters, right? Um, but they weren't really thinking about like the whole picture of like, like financial wellness and things like that. So that's kind of how I decided to start making topics, you know? But after a few couple of videos, I was trying to try to figure out what the audience really wants rather than what I think the audience wants, right? Because I think that really what it comes down to because nobody's gonna listen unless it's something that's interesting to them, right? Because in social media or on the internet, there's so many options out there. So unless it's something that is very entertaining and something that they want to watch, people are not gonna watch it, even if you think it is a good thing for them to know, you know? So like doing a budget, 
it seems like most people didn't care about freaking how to do a budget, right? So yeah. that's why I started making videos about maybe more towards like credit things because there were a lot of people who have bad credit and they want to get in a better position. And if they're in a better position, they could get better lending, you know, um, there's a bunch of other things that come with good credit. And one of the, actually the first videos that did really well for me was about car leasing. Um, I Because I noticed that not that many people were talking about car leasing and you know the, the general consensus was that car leasing is a horrible idea you should never do it but there are specific ways to actually do it where it can actually cost way less than actually even buying a car and even reselling it years later right we all know that buying a car and driving it for like 10 years whatever is going to be the cheapest route but majority of americans they only keep their cars for like five years but if you were to know the specific strategies of leasing vehicles and the right way of doing it it could be extremely cost effective and you could drive a nicer car extremely cost effective than it would to just to buy a brand new car outright gotcha yeah where do you think that uh, uh started just the this idea that car leasing is a horrible idea almost every parent every client i know most um, have this fear with leasing cars and then i know that in in my own household in my fiance's household like it was it was a thing like you don't lease cars it's bad you lose money etc like all these different things but like you said nobody was talking about the pros and was it at that point when you launched that video and it like you saw the views just the difference you were like Oh my goodness there's like this whole audience of people that are genuinely curious on really changing their current perspective on leasing cars yeah 100 percent. because i feel like as an individual or anybody like a creator that is that's in the personal finance space they all talk about how leasing is bad and not yeah. that many of them were talking about like the pros of it so that's why i went that approach because i actually done it personally you know um of course, anything can be a bad purchase. You could buy a brand new car and it's be bad. You could buy a used car and it's bad. You could buy, you could do anything, it's bad, right? So just depending on how you actually play that situation. And I think that's kind of like synced into like our headspace, like leasing is 100% bad. I think that's kind of like a old school way of thinking, like you should always try to buy a house rather than renting, right? Because yeah. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. Their affordability is a little bit different. And one, like, like it's not black and white a lot of times because it's not going to work for everyone out there, you know, because leasing, of course, leasing is a little bit different now than it was like a few years ago, but your payments are usually much smaller. So whatever cash that you have left over, you can usually leverage that for something else, right? But if you weren't going to leverage that and just like buy more things, then of course that really doesn't matter. But if you actually need that cash to do something to make more cash, then that would make sense. 